So you're at the press conference, you did it very ceremoniously. You took your hat off, you took your glasses off, and you went, that's Trevor O'Brien, mm -hmm. showing people your face. Do you feel like you still have to do that? Yeah, I do. Um, you guys told me, hey, Trevor O'Brien, you're the underdog. And I said, geez, you guys got me as an underdog. I'm the heavyweight champion. But I said, OK, I understand. The UK fans and most boxing fans don't know me as much. I mean, I am a heavyweight champion. I do hold one of the WBA heavyweight champion, one of the first original belts as well. And yeah, I, I am the champion of it. So um, people have to get familiar of who I am, and I'm here for a long time. I'm like, I won't be here for here for a long time, but I'm here in the sport for a long time. So I'm gonna be a champion. I'm, I'm continuing to do what I do and build my legacy. So this is who I am. And there's a, lot of, there's a lot of biggish and good names over the last few years that have not been interested in fighting you, Trevor. You know, th th those guys are decent fighters and mm -hmm. they've wanted nothing to do with you. Yeah, because they know who Trevor Bryan is. Um, and like I said, the fans haven't seen me as much on network TV and stuff like that. But within the boxing community and boxing fans, people know who I am because word travels afar, you know what I'm saying? So all these heavyweight champions and all the other champions, these guys know who Trevor Bryan is. They're just waiting for this opportunity just like this right now for this stage for me to showcase my talent against the world so everybody will know. Now, I know you've been floating around the hotel and you might have seen Daniel Dubois, you know, you've seen him here and maybe you're getting a breakfast and he's there and you've seen him around. But today you came face to face, mm -hmm. separated by six or seven inches and mm -hmm. you exchanged some words, you know, polite words, decent words. Could you get anything? Could you get a sense of the young kid, Daniel Dubois? I got a scent. A scent? Oh, nice, man. I've been saying it the whole camp. I smell Because that's what exactly what he is. He's a coward. I mean, he's a glorified amateur. He, 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 they put him in front of big heavy bags, and he does what he's supposed to do, knock those guys out and get them out the way. But the first time he got some real opposition, he got on his knees like a little girl and quit. Like I keep telling people, I'm a real heavyweight champion, I'm a real fighter. Before I quit, I'm gonna be knocked out on my shield. And that's how you're supposed to go in this sport. No other way. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't wave no white flags. We're not Don King, we don't carry around with flags. We don't wave no flags around here. You gotta knock me out to take what's mine. And that's exactly what he came to do. He came all the way across the pond. Now I, I give him, I give him, I commend him for that, for coming across the pond and going to somebody else's backyard to try to take what's theirs, but I'm gonna treat him just like that. A hostile enemy, I'm gonna take him out. It might, it might not be early, and it could be late, but best believe he's gonna touch that canvas and he's gonna taste it. And is that because you're a different type of heavyweight? You're an old school, well schooled heavyweight? Yes, exactly. It's, okay, all heavyweights can fight. All, no, not saying no, excuse me. All heavyweights can punch, okay? Yeah. But what can you do when you can't land your punch and somebody takes away your best punch? It's going to be a long night. Mm. I have all of that. I have all the skills to make it a long night for Du Bois. And he's going to see why he's in there with a different top level champion. And you have got, and people talk about it all the time, Larry Holmes talks about it, some of the guys you've fought talk about it. People even that maybe don't think you're a great fighter, they do talk about your great jab. And mm -hmm. that for a heavyweight, that's the great weapon. Well, to tell you the truth, a lot of people talk about a lot of stuff about Trevor Bryan. They say, oh, Trevor Bryan, he looks like this and he looks like that. But one thing I never heard him talk about was my skills. Yeah. Even though I came in heavier in my last couple fights, they never talked about my skills. They never said, oh, Trevor Bryan can't throw this right hand or he can't throw this jab or you can't throw this hook. They never said nothing about that. But they said, oh, it's about Trevor Bryan weight. And guess what, guys? I came in shape for this one and I'm gonna show you guys what's going down after. Yeah. So for this fight, there's been a different edge to Trevor Bryan's preparation. Definitely. A different edge to your life leading into this fight. Definitely. Like I said, he's coming to take something that's mine. And I'm going to treat that. Like, this is, I have to use this to feed my family. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? He's trying to take literally food out my kid's mouth. My two beautiful girls. That's what he's actually trying to do. And listen, man, I, I come from New York. We don't take lightly to strangers. We don't take lightly. We, we're some rough people. And I, where I come from, the city I come from, never ran, never will. Arbor Hill's hard to kill. And that line you're using there about the idea that he's come to take food from the mouths of your two beautiful daughters, that's inspiration enough. Oh, yeah, of course. That? I'm not just doing this for the, flame, the fame and all that. I am building my legacy. And like I said, I commend the boys because he's a young fighter and he's coming up and he's a big guy. But at the same time, you chose the wrong fight. Maybe you should have went back and defended that loss that you got against George Joyce and built something else from there. But you came straight to the champion, and now you got the champion, you got to pay for it now. So you've got the respect for him for getting on the plane, 
but there's a question mark in your head over the way the Joyce fight finished. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And, and overall as well, I just think he's a, like I said, he's a, he's a, he's an amateur. He's a, he's a well-groomed amateur. That's you're what seasoned. I really think. Yeah. I'm a real seasoned man. You're going to see that June 11th. Now, you're, you're a sensible man, Trevor, with your feet firmly on the floor. But I'm going to ask you a little bit to just look a little bit into the Trevor Bryan crystal ball and just gaze into the future. Mm -hmm. In an ideal world, what happens in the next six to 12 months in Trevor Bryan's life? Um, I'm going to be going against one of the top biggest guys that they say that's in my weight class, and that's Yusek. As if Yusek comes back and um, defends his title and beat Anthony Joshua again the second time, I'll be going against Yusek. I mean, I, honestly, I prefer Anthony Joshua to win because I always looked at, at that fight like me, Trevor Bryan against Anthony Joshua. I almost had a chance one time, but I wasn't prepared and I wasn't ready for it. I'm still early in my career. But now I'm a well-seasoned fighter now. I have this, I have this belt. It's going to be my second time defending. I just swear I hope Anthony Joshua can pull it off because I'm an Anthony Joshua fan. He's a cool guy. But I want him to win. I want to see that fight me against him. So when you were offered the chance, was that as, as a title defense for Joshua, or was it before he beat it was, Charles I Martin? Think, I think it was before he beat Charles Martin. Okay. And I w it wasn't ready yet. It wasn't, it wasn't a big enough steam enough under that fight yet for me to really hop in there. I, I know that you, I love your attitude. Let me get that absolutely straight. I love your attitude. I love how straight and direct you are. But is there something in you, Trevor, that just feels a bit slighted by the lack of respect you sometimes get inside the business? And also the fact that those bookies have made you such a wide underdog. I was talking to Stacey McKinley in the lift earlier the, the, this week, and I've known Stacey on and off for a long time, going back to the early 90s. And, and he told me the odds. They're quite outrageous in a two-horse race, aren't they? Mm-hmm. I'm stunned. So is there part of you that, even though you're putting on a brave face, is there part of you that's a little bit insulted and perhaps hurt by that? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say hurt because where I come from, people don't really think highly of anybody. You see what I'm saying? You have to prove so yourself. you have to prove yourself and prove them wrong. And that's what you write your story after. Oh, we, we, we had this stacked against him. He had this stacked against him. But he still prevailed for some reason. And that's why I'm the dream. I prevail. I manifest my own reality into what it is now today. Heavyweight champion of the world. Yeah. And when you were looking into Daniel's eyes up there with Don in the middle with his flags, and you're looking at him. I seen a scared little boy. You ain't even got to finish it. Yeah. I looked him directly. <laughs> no, don't get me wrong now. Yeah. Like Don King said, I never heard this out of Trevor Bryan because I'm usually the one that comes up there and say, yeah, I'm Trevor Bryan. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to showcase my talent. But no, this brought a different type of Trevor Bryan, which brought a different type of Trevor Bryan in my training camp as well, yeah. as far as in getting prepared and ready for this fight. Now, when I looked in his eyes and sat there and stared, you know what I really seen? I seen a little boy that actually bit off for too much. He asked for something, but he didn't really realize what it's really going to be till in that moment. Mm -hmm. And I seen that in his eyes today. Yeah. Like, damn, I'm really here. This is the fight that I've been asking for, and here I am. And look, this is another big guy that's, that's woofing. But let's see what's going to happen on, on Saturday. And guess what? He's going to get everything he ever asked for. Before the fight, we're a few days out from the fight, Trevor. Thanks for this. I won't keep you much longer. I know how busy you've been, and I know you've got an agenda of things to do. But at this point in fight week, do you feel more switched on, more energized now than you've ever done? Do you, is, is there something inside you that acknowledges, this is a big fight in my life, man. This is a big night. I've been preparing for this since I was 11. Honestly, ever since I became a boxer, you know what I'm saying? I've been doing that for how many, that many years? 21 years, I'm 33 now, you know what I'm saying? I, 32 now, I'll be 33 in August. But um, I've been training for this. This is, has always been in my mind. I always had the platform, I always had the stage, but I didn't necessarily know where it was gonna be in life. But this is it right here. This is the fight for me, for everyone to see that who Trevor Bryan is. Like I said, I took my glasses, and I took my hat off. This is Trevor Bryan to see and get used to him. And, and finally, Trevor, it's on the night, you've left this, you've done your interviews, you've got ready, you're warmed up, you've got your bandages on, you've got your gloves on, you're walking to the ring, you're in the ring, the ring clears, there's just you, Daniel and the referee and the lights and the people watching. What happens first, Bell? No one can save him. I'm going to feed him with this jab and later on I'm going to drunk him with this. And after all this is said and done, I'm going to still take him out. We're going to still have a good time and I'm going to tell him, hey, young boy. Keep going, keep doing your thing. You're gonna be somebody one day, but not today.